Welcome to the stream. We're going to kick off with our previous sculpt. For anyone who were here last time, uh, we're doing a sculpt from Corey Smith. There you go. I actually need to. Well, we're waiting actually, anyway, because we need to wait for a couple of people to jump in. Actually, I can show you this. Fanny is, Fanny is in there. I don't know. As you got the texture. Import. Select your image. Select, and then see here. Add the spotlight, and this will pull it up. And you can shrink it. Way. and the last thing and Z will turn on and off your spotlight just hit Z that will turn it on and off and the last thing you'll need to do now because you'll see I can't uh, I can't by default alright no so I can use the move brush see if I use clay build up there nothing happens so what you'll need to do is just go into brush go into samples and spotlight projection turn that off because that wants to take your the image. <clears throat> the idea there is like you'll project your image. So you'll put an image on Spotlight, put it over uh, a mesh, and then sculpt through the image, and it will take detail from the image. It'll project. But we don't want that. We just want the reference. In this case, I have the reference to the side. But just so you guys, you guys can, can see it there. down a little bit. I'm going to overpower him. Let's go 15 by even number. Um, MJ Sculpts, how's it going brother? Kamal, how are you? Mega JPs back in, how's it going? And my favourite of the JPs, Zin, how's it going brother? Yulia's back. Yeah, great concept. It's um, any of Corey Smith's are unbelievable. He has a great way of he, he has like a, a lovely way of having like a nice, really clean shapes within it. Like there's detail there, but there's also lots of big clean shapes, which I love the contrast of. Um. So Atif is asking for how how long do have I worked in ZBrush? Um, it's a long time now, I think. It's like um, seven years. Seven years. So more than enough. Uh, you'll see here the last time we were working on this sculpt, and the head is tricky. So this will be an interesting one to figure out. The head is actually really tricky. Um, the last time we were looking at it, you're trying to like, it's, it's, it's a kind of weird one in terms of when I looked at it initially when I chose the concept, I didn't think it would be too bad, but it's the fact that here, you've got these lines that go all the way down, which can't really be the corners of his mouth because the corners of his mouth will go right down to you know close to his jawline that would be like if i sculpted it that way that'd be weird um so we'll probably have that as kind of a fold and the corners of the mouth up higher but i don't want to just continue a fold from the corners of the mouth because that will look like you know kind of joker style thing like a smiley scar um so we don't want to do that um, so we have to figure out how we're going to resolve that. The other thing is the when we were looking at the side, I said we'll probably look at the body today, but just to touch on it, when we look at the side, like I did a little bit since the last stream. Uh, after that stream, actually, I was just sitting with it for a bit, just to kind of find 
a way that the side of the head wouldn't look kind of as weird and it looks a bit better than it did uh, we'll see it was actually a matter of just pulling out the middle of the brow further which gives this kind of thing which I think is the best case scenario for that to, to get that shape right um, and then how that how the teeth sit in if the if it's such a if it's a, a really big um, uh, underbite so you're like pushing his chin forward a lot uh, like that snarl uh, how to position his teeth and I'm thinking because it, it'll ha we'll have to I'll have to test it and just see how it looks because I'm thinking if I have his lower teeth pushed out really far past his upper teeth it might look a bit goofy um, so we'll have to we'll have to kind of play with that and see it's one of those things that like here in the 2d it, like this works and it's really nice but in 3d if I have it literally like that it might look a little bit strange especially as soon as you change the angle at all um but so we'll have to figure that out um and obviously then it's a case of like we have to like refine the hair and the the beard and do this big scar and stuff uh, and do something with the eyebrows see the ears are just planes for the moment which is just place holding it just to give me a, an idea the the silhouette and placement and scale relative to everything around it all that stuff so what i did See the full body. What I did was I took this base mesh that I have, um, and just really quickly, just before the stream, just prepping before the stream, I just kind of got it more or less in like its bulky form, uh, just with the move brush and inflate brush and that kind of thing see like the hands still need to be bigger I, I, what i'm thinking is though i might sculpt the hands separately i don't think i'll use these hands um but the hands could certainly be it's not a bad idea just to get them somewhere in the right ballpark just for just so what we're working with feels right as we're working with it you know It's not the worst thing in the world. Actually, that's, that's there. Um, yeah. So I said for this one, I'd start with it because I always just, you know, add more geometry and make new shapes um, on the fly. But when I'm working in production, I don't always do that. I do still use that method, um, but. It, more so on like hero characters like the main characters of shows and or films or games whatever the case may be and you know I'm trying to establish shapes from the get-go that might be completely new shapes and establish like the style of the shapes and all that so I don't want the I don't want the base mesh that's already there kind of making decisions for me because decisions whether you like it or not have been made within the base mesh and when there's just nothing there and you're starting with a, with a primitive and pulling it around you have to make all the decisions from the start so you're a bit more i would say like artistically free um where with a base mesh yeah, you're kind of making decisions you, some of the decisions are made for you but the idea here is just to get a mesh a body mesh there that we can start to extract the clothes off of but we want to get the right volumes essentially but we don't have to worry we don't have to worry about too much um you know making like a really appealing uh anatomical body or anything like that um once you get some nice volumes and stuff in there we'll be fine something like will help us get the clothing the way we want it like here you can see he's got a collarbone 
like for extracting the clothes if anything when i extract the clothes i'm just gonna have to smooth back the collarbone shape once i pull the clothes so there's not really any need for it here or even the chest you know what i mean so if you think about it that way like we just want the volume to be correct and the the proportions and stuff to be correct so that way when we make the clothes we know that underneath he's uh, anatomically sound I don't want any uh, I don't want to have to try to come up with all that while I'm doing the clothes you know try to pay attention to that as well as making the clothes there's no need this is this is just a quicker and yeah. how much time can we learn zbrush properly well uh it depends oh, it's a hard question to answer um a thief or sorry yeah a thief um because I mean it's kind of different for everybody depends on mm, depends on like what you mean by properly like you could learn every button in the software but still not be able to make a nice character because you still have to learn like anatomy and shape design and like it's a tool it's not going to make a character for you you still have to do the art side of things but learning the tool technically you could learn the tool technically uh i would say very quickly with a lot of regular practice like if you have the time every day to put in a lot of practice um and you know watch tutorials go through youtube tutorials uh, any paid tutorials if you want to go that route as well uh you can learn the tool like everything that you would need to make this for example very very fast like a month you could do it i would say um but it depends too because it depends on how well you like retain that kind of information um yeah i i think that's the best answer i can kind of give you there it's not necessarily uh something i can just say a month and you'll be able to do this it's just, there's a lot more to it but yeah I, I would say if you can really give it the time uh within a month because really you learn the brushes so you learn a handful of brushes not all the brushes because obviously there's a lot of brushes right that's a that's a, a lot of you don't need to learn all these most of the well not most but a big chunk of these down here are not uh, native to uh, zbrush um like if you downloaded zbrush tomorrow uh i think it would only be to like like here everything after that so like half everything after that is like brushes that i made or downloaded or whatever and then uh within these like you've got some nice handy brushes that are cool in very specific situations and you can learn them after but the first thing would be like the the move brush which is like BMV, uh, like that's your shortcuts in your brushes, B and then move M, V. Um, B for brush, M, V for move obviously. Um, move, uh, the Damien standard uh, for like cutting in valleys, uh, inflate, would use fairly often. Uh, pinch, the pinch brush. Uh, for making like creases and I guess the polish um, brush here uh, for just like flattening out areas and obviously then you just your so in terms of those that's your brushes and then like no okay this is smooth so I can smooth by holding in shift and you can see there like when I hold in smooth I get that it just smooths it down um, like if you think about clay it's like putting water 
on your hands on warm clay and like rubbing it down um where if you hold shift press down and then let go of shift and rub it evens out the surface you see so it's not it's not doing see the way it's a different effect now um like let me see like okay see this the back here like this so you can see it better so i can smooth smooths in ah, that's not a good example maybe yeah like see say i want here to be a nice curve rather than here I have a bit of a hit just here and then it curves if i just want the whole thing to be just curved see where if i just hold shift you see what happens um so that's you'll learn little things like that that's really that's really handy and then just how to mask so your brushes your smooth and your mask a handful of brushes smoothing mask and be able to turn your model um after that it's pretty easy uh you can have you can just add more jump like you can just add in another sphere like just go insert and sphere and add another sphere and pull that and uh into whatever shape you want you can which will stretch it but you can use either z remesh or dynamesh these are all things like you just you'll pick up fairly quickly um by watching like like all of what i just said would be in pretty much any uh if you put intro to zbrush into youtube pretty much any beginner youtube, uh, YouTube video on zbrush will tell you all of that and from that point you can start sculpting you know what i mean you can start making trying to make characters and figuring out what way you like to do it then from there you can go a bit further and then you know like in in these videos for example i've gone through my workflow um i know i keep promising use a tutorial that i still haven't made just trying to find the time to really get to do it properly because i don't want to make a you know if i'm gonna do a tutorial i want to do a good one something that's you know you can really use and reference back to as well would be the idea um and that'll go through now you know the beginning you know you know like as a, as a beginner you know all those things that i just described and now i can give you a workflow in which to follow like steps in which to follow to make so that making a character is the most the it's the least resistance to making a character if that makes sense um, so that would be if i was learning right now or if i could tell myself how to learn right now that's probably how i do it which is it's kind of more or less how i did it I didn't necessarily go looking for a workflow, I kind of just came up with my own as true necessity as time went on, but yeah. I would say once you learn the basics, just start playing around and making little sculpts and because you should be able to enjoy it. You know, you don't want to spend two months just learning and have nothing to show for it because you won't. It's like um you know if you were learning to play the guitar and two months in you knew loads of different chords and loads of different you, you you could do some of the scales but you still couldn't play a single song where to me if you're going to learn the guitar the first thing you should do is find a really simple song so in this case a really simple sculpt uh, with like four chords so your basic brushes and learn that song aka and do that sculpt um and it won't be perfect you can you'll be able to you know but you'll have learned a bunch doing it and then you can do the next one with a bit more and you do the next one with a bit more that's essentially how i learned it and that way it's not too much about like oh i need to learn this as fast as i can so i can start making cool stuff it's just you know i just enjoy making 
stuff in ZBrush, whatever, whatever it is. And then uh, you can have at least because if you're enjoying, it takes a it takes a long time to get to be, you know, to get to a certain level that you know people, not just you, but other people are like, oh wow, that's amazing, or whatever. You know, people are responding to your artwork. That takes a long time. Um, it, it, you know, it can often it usually takes years, a good few years. Uh, you know your 10,000 hours I'm sure a lot of you have heard that expression of every professional the, the, the kind of benchmark for what it takes to be a professional is to spend 10,000 hours at something and then you can call yourself a professional usually that's the kind of idea at least uh, so yeah it can it can take a while before you get to that level where you know, random people are impressed by your work or whatever, or, you know. So, to get to that stage, to, to, to hold on and keep going for that length of time, uh, you have to be just enjoying it. There's nothing else that will keep you going. You want, like, the, the idea of other people liking your work won't get you there. Uh, you have to just enjoy making it. It has to be fun for you. So I always try to tell people just to do something, especially starting out, uh, just keep things simple and within reach. Um, don't try to make something really complex and over the top straight away. And you're gonna make mistakes in your anatomy and you're gonna make mistakes in like your design choices uh, in terms of like how you shape things like your shape design but you'll get better and better and you'll you'll see that and that's the great thing as well I, something i did and i'd highly recommend it actually is uh ha get a folder like on you know you like i'd say a lot of you have you know google drive or some sort of cloud service drive thing um set a folder there aside and just call it something like progress I mine, mine was called progress and every time I did anything I always put it into that folder I just kept whatever it was it didn't really matter just everything I just threw everything just render like ZBrush renders and uh, from like the very first time I ever used ZBrush and I didn't actually know shift R did actually rendered it I didn't know that and I also didn't know that you could come up to document and export an image from here. I literally just screenshotted the screen and saved that because I didn't know how to do that in ZBrush. Um, and I have that even in that progress folder. So, and it's really nice to look back on and go, oh God, <laughs> and laugh at the stuff that you used to be making. Um, and nice to just remember and, and see the progress that you've made and remember back to when certain making certain things was a real struggle and now you can do it without even thinking about it so i'd highly recommend to do that i'm just going to Yeah, so I hope, I hope that helps at least. I can't necessarily probably give you the answer that you're hoping for, which is you rarely can when it comes to this kind of stuff of like how long does it take or even people ask how long does it take to do a sculpt. I mean, that's all that kind of questions. It's really, really difficult to just answer that kind of thing. But I try to give you the best answer I can. Um... This man has a huge st chin. Yes, he absolutely does. Stylized for the win all day. Um, yeah, I love. I, I I always prefer doing. I I have nothing. I don't like hate doing realistic kind of sculpts or whatever. But I <clears throat> definitely have always preferred doing stylized, just because I pref I like 
the shape design end of it and all that stuff and trying to figure out how to simplify something in a appealing way and you know kind of take real life and put my spin on it rather than which is basically what stylized is but in a nutshell that's what stylized is is taking reality and putting your spin on it um rather than just taking reality and replicating it kind of uh so yeah i would absolutely say stylized for the win but you know there's a, there's a there's merit to to both learning human anatomy important for sculpting like that yes absolutely it is uh, it's one of the kind of fundamental it, it is it, arguably if you're doing characters it's arguably the biggest it's yeah argue, arguably the most important fundamental um there's other things too like your, your shape design like it's hard to argue which is more important there, but um, or it's not exactly clear cut which is more important. But um, I would just say you should you have to know both uh, to to be you know a, a truly really good and successful character modeler. You need to know both uh, in terms of and then in terms of the industry you also need to be you you need to be technical too it's a it's a complicated job like not i don't want to um discourage anyone certainly but uh and it shouldn't discourage you either it's very interesting because there's so many different aspects to it and that's what makes it makes it fun because uh, you know, you gotta know that stuff. You gotta know the anatomy. You gotta know shape design. Uh, you know, and it, it, you know, you know, you'll already have heard a lot of stuff about shape. You like, you know, if you make a villain, you make pointy angles, uh, for example. Um, like that's the shape design principle. Uh, like angular means more villainous. Um, or often more masculine or it can also mean you know you know you, you have a character design and you, you start with like essentially a square and you try to like fill a character in that shape like think of the, sh the character's silhouette as a square to make this bulky kind of um this is a solid character you know because you can't just push over a square so it's like visual cues that we have and um, all that kind of stuff and you learn more and more about that as you go i'm not saying you have to be a master of all these things to get a job you don't but the better you are at them the more success you will have um, and then you know there's the the technical sides of it uh, topology and blend shapes and um, you'll want to know a little bit about rigging and how that works in order to know how your topology should look um, and, and texturing too um, a lot of a lot of a lot of really good sculptors you'll notice as well are actually quite good 2d artists it's usually how they start um, You know your 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 Gabriel Suarez, uh, Matt Thorpe, Dylan Ekron, um, there's there's tons of them. Um, now that again, you don't have to be a two D artist or anything like that, but um, just in terms of like, 
like I did 2D for years before I started sculpting um, and so when I started using ZBrush um, it was really helpful because I'd already used within 2D I had learned so much about uh, anatomy and shape design and stuff like that so I was able to you know once once I got the hang of ZBrush I was able to sculpt something you know relatively half decent kind of but still obviously had a lot to learn this is you're talking like this is I'm saying like seven years ago at that stage still so I still had a lot of stuff to learn So yeah, in a nutshell, yeah, human anatomy, very human anatomy, very important. Um, oh, here's an interesting one. I've never been asked this one on the stream before. Uh, what's my zodiac sign? Are you a Virgo? Sorry for the question. I'm curious. No worries. Uh, I'm Taurus actually. Uh, I I don't know a lot about zodiac signs, so I'm not even sure. I I, uh, what was it? Like st stubborn and strong, or yeah stubborn and like strong-headed or whatever i think it means uh or yeah down to earth i think could be making that one up <laughs> but yeah anyway taurus don't know what that says about me but there you go um i enjoy watching you work sir and hearing you speak thank you very much cj cg cgs i just um, cj came out of my mouth there uh, it took me two hours to master ZBrush. There you go. It's different for everybody. Two hours took me two months. Um, <laughs> and I say master. Um, oh, sorry. I'm reading the Nightbot comments. Um, I probably only use four brushes. Make a JP. I, I probably only use four brushes, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I'm the same. Like 90% of the time, I'm using like the move Damien standard pinch um, yeah that's more or less it like masking and moving things with the move brush a lot of that kind of stuff I just use the Damien standard to dig in there you can see up here most of the time if you keep an eye especially at this stage it'll be on move uh, the odd time I like flick over to like inflate just to like add some volume somewhere yeah. Um, the most time you use the most time the most of the time you use the move brush like 60% of the total time you work on your project yeah 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 I agree um, clay build up is another good one uh, Damien pinch and polish yeah uh, yeah clay build up um, is good like at this like I'm using this like low poly type thing so if i want to add volume it'd be cleaner like you can see here like if i want to add volume let's say to the chest if i just touch it with the inflate i'm i'm getting that result uh then i can go in with the clay build up and do like this kind of thing this is much more of a kind of sculptural brush it's a great brush and it, that's why so many people use that and it is one of the like standard brushes that a lot of people use so you like go in and maybe smooth back maybe not uh depends on how you want maybe you want to leave the kind of sculptural marks in you know because you can go back and leave nice kind of edges by going in and then pulling back which are you know using your alt to to sculpt uh, into it um, so depends on what you're looking for uh, I don't need the clay build up very much for this guy right now um, but it is one it is another one I should have mentioned as well so go and show on that one uh, Kamal um, Salade hello dear how are you uh, can you show how to create cloth loop 
How to create cloth loop. Hmm. Not sure what you mean by create cloth loop. Like you say that like it's a cloth loop. I mean if I was creating say like a for me, if I was creating a loop, let's just say a loop of cloth, I don't know. Maybe it's like something on his waist here or something. I would just simple as that. Um extract under subtool and the thickness I just keep this thickness down except that'll give, me there. that'll give me that it'll also give me it'll give me a double sided mesh I, if I'm working trying to work with cloth I'll always start with a single sided mesh so you know I'm just um, if I go back there if I, it's a, you see the way it gives you, so this is a, the outside's a polygroup, the edges are a polygroup, and the inside's a different polygroup. So if I just control and shift, click, I'll, I'll single out this polygroup, and then I just delete hidden. And now I can either go slice, just to like slice off the, the jiggly bits, I can go into deformation. I can go polish by groups. If you look at the bottom here, you see what that's doing? And that will flatten that out. And that works too. Um, depends on what I need. Both are good to know. And then once it's flat, then I can go, you know, keep that poly count. I can go all the way down, zero mesh. And then start from here and just get the shape that I want out of the cloth while it's low poly and that way it'll stay clean. And once that base shape is made, um, I can go from there and make, I can, you know, I can either Z remesh it again, you can see it redistributes, or I can just, you know, subdivide and start. sculpting um, wrinkles and so on so I hope that answers your question um, uh, what has been for you the hardest part of the anatomy to sculpt asks Kamal the hardest part of the anatomy it's hard to say the hardest part necessarily Anatomy is tricky. Um, hmm. Depends. Like the hands can be really awkward in certain, you know, especially if you've got strange uh, poses in the hands. Uh, yeah. I'd say, if I had to say anywhere, the hands probably. Um, the face is very complicated too, but I, I think I'm just so used to sculpting faces now. I'd nearly, I'd nearly consider myself a portrait sculptor for, for a while. Uh, but yeah, so it's hard to say actually what, what I would say is the hardest part of the anatomy to sculpt. Um, yeah I used to do um, like some studies you know what I mean I'd sculpt just a hand or sculpt an ear or sculpt whatever uh, a foot a leg a, you know sculpting a, a hand and forearm in a certain pose where like you can see some of the 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 muscles in the forearm you know just get anatomy reference and try to figure it out where the muscles are going like where where they attach in around the elbow like between the elbow and the wrist and stuff uh, that helps a lot you should always that's a good 
thing to think about when you're studying your anatomy is like well first thing is if you think of muscles like pillows stop that is like it's the kind of the standard like beginner thing is to imagine muscles like pillows and they are not they're they're like straps they're like elastic bands they're like thick elastic bands that stretch when you pull them and compress when you well, compress them uh, hence why like you have like when you pull your your arm out your bicep flattens and then when you pull it in your bicep like compresses or the your triceps even do the same thing uh, at the back here um, or like your, your your like traps up here they like compress up when you lift your shoulder uh, all that kind of stuff so uh, figuring out where they connect and especially in the forearm or something like that because that twists so knowing where they connect so you know you know so you, you've sculpted an arm like this but can you sculpt an arm like this well not if you don't know where the muscles connect and like that might be a thing in even in 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 stylized anatomy where you, you know you have this kind of um maybe you're using like there's often so you've got like a, a, a volume of muscle here on the arm so i mean like here on the arm right and so you want to have that in your stylized sculpt you've decided as a design decision that you want to incorporate that you don't want just the tube and that's why you need to know your anatomy even with stylized sculpting it doesn't change anything uh, it's not because you're doing stylized you don't need to know anatomy as well or whatever you still need to know it uh, because you know you need to be able to make that decision and you have to pick it from somewhere you can't just add random lumps for the sake of just design it has to come from somewhere or else it's going to look broken um and then like where that so um what happens when you twist the wrist because i don't know if you can see it there in the camera but like you're get like the the lines between the muscles in my forearm change um so it is important to know and the same with like you can see here like what shapes i want to go for with the the quads here um or with the the calves like having a kind of flat in the back maybe i want to give like usually usually the inside of the calf you get so you get it you get a hit on both sides when i say a hit what i mean is right this is a curve and then that's a curve with a hit so as in a hit so forgive my accent and here's the hit there here so and it can be it's always good to have it's always nice to have not always but it can be nice to have a hit in your curves right so maybe it's down here and and often again again yeah so now you have now you start with a curve you're like all right i want to make a little i want to make that a little bit more interesting okay a curve with a hit okay you got a hit in the middle now you're like mm, i still want to make it a little bit more interesting okay cool so a curve with an off center hit so it's down here rather than straight in the middle or you know wherever it may be up up higher whatever and you're thinking of those things say if you're doing the calf you might want to think all right so i've got a i've got a curve here and the calf is not a big curve that goes all the way down the 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 the, mo the majority of the volume is at the top and tapers off but maybe you want to do something like that and just add a little go back and use your all smooth to just get that curve because you want it to maintain that nice curve hit you see it gets a bit wobbly in there so i can use my all smooth you see that just below it to get the curve back 
colocar aqui o, o meu brush aqui da hit there. If I want that, so that's with the pinch, you could even just touch it lightly with the Damien Standard. You see, so I'm just adding a little, adding some variation to the shapes. Now the other thing is the outside. So then now, okay, now anatomy knowledge. So I know the inside, the hit in terms of like from the, so that's from the side. Now from the front or back in terms of like the silhouette. So is that on? It is. So in terms of the silhouette, I know the inside of the calf. I want to add that hit. Be out here. And the outside of the calf will be lower. So maybe I want to do something like that. And again, that has to come from somewhere. I'm not randomly making that decision. And you'll see it if you look at sculpts. Keep keep an eye for that specifically, right? Uh, in future, uh, or even just for the next while, when you're looking at uh, sculpts uh, on ArtStation, on you know Zebra Essential or Instagram, wherever. Um, keep an eye out for the legs and see what shape they are. Now, sometimes, you know, especially on stylized characters, like the leg will be like this or whatever, right? It'll be something very, very simplified, which is fine. But on more, let's say, detailed stylized sculpts, you'll get more shapes. So it depends on how minimal the artist is trying to be, but generally speaking, you will see this. You, you will see this a lot. And for anyone who doesn't have a lot of um, anatomy knowledge, that's where that's coming from. And if you look across multiple artists' sculpts, you'll see that same design decision. And the reason being is because it's coming from the anatomy, not because they're copying each other. Although some artists do copy. Well, sorry, I that's that was a silly statement to make. Every artist copies at some level, uh, some more than others. It's not okay to just straight copy someone, but like referencing other artists is essentially copying them, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's encouraged, in fact. It's it's often seen as it's often a very beginner thing to be like, no, I have to come up with something completely on my own. Um, you know, because they and I, I've done that myself. Where you know, I don't want to uh, copy someone else's work to the point that I've probably developed bad habits from that. Like I should really, I'm doing this now. I should really have some um, reference of like not just human, real human bodies. Um, I also have my anatomy book there uh, that I reference all the time but also some good stylized images different ones plenty of different ones so that I can be oh I like that idea and that idea maybe you can put a different spin on this shape that they've done here whatever the case may be and you're 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 combining ideas in and then putting your own twist on them and um, or even just finding inspiration in a in a you know, the type of shapes uh, an artist has used. So. Really, I should be doing that right now and it would make this easier and probably more appealing in the end. But we're just going hardcore right now. But that said, I'm still, I have like a library of references from the past in my head that I'm just kind of subconsciously pulling from. If that makes sense. A visual library, it's very important. Feng Zhu was a great man for talking about the visual library. Um, Feng Zhu, uh, he does a, um, does a YouTube channel and he does uh, design labs, I think it's called. I used to watch them religiously. I used to watch all of them. Uh, I think I watched, like back when it was, I think the 
latest episode was like 80 something I'd watched every single from episode 1 all the way to 80 something I absolutely loved um, I've watched a few since still but I don't I haven't seen them as much as of late because their concept art it's more about concept art it's not about sculpting but he's, he's very interesting he's a wise man with plenty of experience in the industry he has his own design school in uh, I think it's Singapore it's a you know very very fancy uh, design school I don't know how much it costs or anything before anyone asks um, but it won't be cheap I wouldn't think then again it depends on what you consider cheap I mean that goes out saying but And I've noticed as well because I'm talking and not I'm I'm on autopilot because I'm concentrating on what I'm saying rather than what I'm sculpting, which is often the case with the with streams. It's not really possible to. It can be difficult, let's say, just to to you know have obviously you can't fully focus on both things at the same time. So I've realised that I haven't pulled back and looked at the sculpt in ages. I've been in at this distance and going into specific parts so it's, uh, I just I to be wary to say that because you know I don't I know I don't and I can't imagine any anyone does um, sculpt the same exactly the same way when they're streaming unless they're well if someone's sitting there they're not talking or anything and they're just working on the sculpt then fine uh, but if you're trying to you know talk about what you're doing talk about you know show any lessons or try to teach or anything like that while you're sculpting uh, you don't necessarily sculpt how you usually always would or at least not not exactly not exactly and so I'd be wary not to give you guys the wrong impression and then you're kind of subconsciously even mimicking how you see me doing things. Um, so I just try to call myself out, <laughs> essentially. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, where was I here? Question is two hours took me to open a higher... Oh no, before that. I was a very chatty tonight, I love to see Um, no problem, Atif. Happy to help. Um, yeah. So, um, hey, it's not Jay. Says, with 3D, you need to master so many things. So you need 10K hours in every aspect. Sculpting, modeling, rendering, uh, etc. Um, yeah, I mean, ideally, for sure. For sure. Um it depends. There's 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 the aspect of like, uh, are you a are you a jack of all trades or a king of none? You know the way they say that. So like, uh, I would say you often, it's, it's you do, but rarely I meet people who are amazing at sculpting, and are like wizards with like topology and blend shapes, and know a good bit about like a substantial amount about rigging. Um, and know a substantial amount about texturing and are really good at lighting um, they usually are like I've seen I know po there's there's popular uh, sculptors zebra sculptors um, and I see their and I, I see their sculpts and you know I see it like a screenshot in, in ZBrush or whatever and I'm like oh that looks amazing and then the ren and then they do a render and I'm like oh it looked better it, ju it looked better just in like you know like the way this is now like just straight in zbrush with no render it looked better there than it does in the final render because like you know the the specular is there's too much specular there's um the the whites of the like the rim light are way too strong or 
you know, like blown out whites and uh, like it's too there's, there's not any kind of interest in in the lighting setup it's it's very just kind of everything's just bright and um, there's no contrast there's no there's no uh, spectrum of value it's just it's all up the top end uh, you should when you're doing your lighting you should try to take advantage of everything from black to white and everything in between in terms of your values your value structure and, and your in your final render um, so you know stuff like that um, like I, I do texture and it, I, I like there's stuff there that I like I'll start drawing I'll do the 2d I'll flesh out the idea in 2d I'll refine the idea I'll, I'll start it in 3d and refine it in 3d um, do the topology do the texturing um, like I did that recently for work um, to make an example I, I, I was putting together essentially a how to on how to make a character for, 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 for the studio I work for and I put together an entire character and I textured it and rendered it and did all of that to, to, to kind of essentially flesh out the entire pipeline so I can do I can't rig I'm not a rigger uh, I know rigging and I can I understand how it works and I can work with riggers and I well I do like constantly work with riggers it's very important as a character modeler um, to work really heavily especially as a lead with your rigging team um, and if you don't you it's at your own peril um, but I can do everything else to the point where you know well, that's anyone, any, any of you guys that have seen my portfolio, like you'll see, I I do the texturing and all that stuff, and the rendering. Uh, now, I wouldn't call myself a master. Well, I wouldn't call myself a master at anything, but uh, like my strongest thing is sculpting. But I enjoy the other I enjoy texturing and that's the newest one uh, I, I definitely enjoy lighting I really enjoy that um, and that's why I did it not necessarily because I had to because that's a lot does help with portfolio because when things are well displayed of course it's just of course um, But I, I, I wouldn't consider myself as good at like lighting as I am at sculpting or certainly not texturing. Like te I'm still, compared to sculpting, I'm still very new at texturing. Like I haven't even been texturing a year really. Uh, not not properly, not, you know. Um, so I'm still learning a lot in, in texturing. But that's the thing as well is like, um, you don't have to be a master of everything. I don't think, um, but you know, if if people are gonna really enjoy it, you have to be at least good at everything you're doing. Yeah, it should be adding. Like after I texture something, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be not as good as it was when it was just a grayscale model. If that's the case, then I've messed up the texturing. You know, uh, same with like, like I said, if it it. If the model look better like this in the viewport in ZBrush than it does in the final render, then I've messed up the render. That's not good because it should. The idea is to make it better, not worse. Just to say you rendered it, and that takes time. Like you said, your 10k hours that takes time. Um, so yeah. At this stage now, we're just messing with that. You could really be making the clothes, I think. we're having fun and that's that's the point uh, and I've said this a bunch before um, like sometimes I don't like like this I don't need to do anything on the anatomy really uh, to, to start making the clothes like I don't need to add this little crease into the abdo the abdominal here but it's it's nice and uh, I enjoy 
doing it and looking at it and then being like, look at that nice thing. Because that's why we do it. So it shouldn't always, it doesn't have to be. You have to enjoy, it's very important, to, especially now with everyone like being like, oh, I need as many Instagram followers and stuff like that. And, and there is merit to that in terms of, you know, the more exposure you have, the more chances you have at like big jobs and, you know, not that you can't get a big job without it, but it gives you more exposure, so higher chance uh, of, of night, cool opportunities coming your way. Um, opens you up to that. So there's absolutely merit to it, but it's just, especially when you're doing that, it's very important to not forget that you're not just there to like churn out as much as you can to get followers and to build your, yeah, while well, you're following across everything, uh, that you have to keep enjoying the process because you'll burn out, you'll burn out like really, really quickly. Most people will burn out really, really quickly because like especially social media gathering a following and like, oh, I did this sculpt and this got a thousand likes and then I did this sculpt and I, this is even better. And then you post it and it gets 300 likes and you're like, oh, maybe I posted it on the wrong day. I'll post next, I'll post the last one I posted on Sunday. I'll post the next one on Sunday. Then that will be as good. And it doesn't and you're not sure why and then you do a bust and you kind of half finish it you're not that bothered with it and you just post it anyway you do a quick render and it gets 2,000 your likes and you're like I don't understand and any anyone you ask will tell you the same thing I've never heard anyone say oh yeah this is how it works and this is how you make it consistent I've never known anyone to see like it can this is how I get consistently this amount and stuff like that so if you get too tied up in that um you I I I would personally argue for sure that you won't get even a fraction of the satisfaction that you will get out of just enjoying the process of making things that you want to make. Um so and you should also be unapologetic about what you make and not try to make things that people will like. You should just make what you want to make and people that like what you like will like it. There's a bumper sticker. I'll have to do, start doing merch. <laughs> um, I keep taking ages to answer your questions and then there's like 20 more. So where was I on that one? Okay. There you go. Okay, so the Babu. I see you back. Um, hey Paul, what's the reason for straight fingers? I usually see it done for animation, but for games, hands are usually modeled relaxed or uh, natural. So that's a interesting question. Uh, so it, it's not it's not a rule in animation to have straight fingers. Uh, often I've worked um, where it's spent fingers it, it actually just depends what the animators like if you if you're going to ask it depends some animators when basically say this is your this is your this is your a pose and this is your character let's just say right let's just pretend he's in a super suit this is your character uh done hand it over uh it gets rigged and it gets rigged like this right i've now this is the neutral pose everything is neutral and so the rigger has rigged it like this, right? So basically, if when the animator gets this and they pose a few bits and they go, nah, 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 and then they zero out every control, they put every control back to neutral. It goes back to this pose. So with the hands, when some animators prefer when the hands go back to neutral, that, that the fingers go straight. Some animators prefer that. The thumb I always keep at an angle, like this, because when you place a joint and then you want to move from that joint, like the arm being down here, it's like, oh, you can't really see me. 
like the arm being at that 45 degree angle rather than straight out um, or even the leg being straight or whatever you kind of think about it or even if you're doing like a, the trunk of an elephant or something you angle it straight from where it's gonna go a, a really complicated one that people always miss uh, that's a really good example is a, a horse's neck or anything that's function that functions like a horse it can be a dog but a horse's neck is an easier obvious more obvious one a horse needs to be able to eat off the ground right but when we think of a horse we think of this thing that stands up and it's like neck is like back and then we put the the neck coming out of the bottom of the head because that's where our neck comes out of but a horse's head isn't built like ours and the neck it's more like the neck comes out of the back of the head and then it goes down and we have to keep it at an angle that when it's rigged the horse can dip its head its neck its head all the way down and it won't have any, any of you that have never done a model a horse for anything and you're gonna have to in the future remember this because you're gonna you're gonna and then write to me and thank me say this is your dodgy horse right now often you see like drawings of horses and stuff and it's like this kind of thing right it's this kind of thing or even even worse it's like it's like this kind of thing right but that's not how a horse if you give that to a rigger and it often often depends but often you might find often your rigger won't know any better um either possibly right because maybe they haven't heard learned this the hard way either what it should be like and once you see it you're gonna be like oh yeah well duh what it needs to be like is this is the body this is the leg it has to be like this and the neck is here and then the head is out here so it connects at the back of the head not out here same with a dog it doesn't connect like here like this which I have seen that again and again it's the same even with a chicken so uh, and then you put your your point here your joint and then the other joint and then it rotates this way and then the head can go down like this and the head is like you know straight down and it can eat grass this that that other horse that we talked about this horse this horse this horse can't eat grass this horse is gonna starve to death this guy is gonna starve to death so uh, sorry fingers <laughs> So, um, I was talking about, the reason I was saying that is because of the finger, the thumb, right? So rather than having it up here, because your thumb doesn't really do much of this kind of stuff. So you always want it in the middle of the areas it's gonna go. So it's, so the thumb here should be, should be pointing that it will touch, that if you just go straight forward, if you imagine the nail as the center, as the, your normal, essentially, and it's gonna go that way. It's gonna to drive towards your pinky finger right and that's so it's like this and then it should be at like an angle down here like this similar to the way you position the arms down like that you're gonna go down here now in terms of relaxing the fingers that's purely up to what your animation department would prefer the hands to zero to zero out to because what happens is if your hands so the animators want to do this Right, they want to do for whatever maybe they're waving and they want to do this they zero out the rig and when they zero out the rig they get this and now they have to straighten the fingers where often they'll just want like they can they can they can even add a library of poses and stuff for the hands and all that kind of crack so it can get more complicated but they have to straighten it out where often so i say often it's it depends on your experience and the animators that you work with but I've worked with a good few animators that have told me this is better for them and so that's what I'll do. If the animators are like, no, I prefer a relaxed hand, 
that's what I'll do. It makes no difference to me. It's perfectly fine, whatever way they want to do it. Um, the benefit to having a slightly bent hand and why you will probably see it more often is the same reason you'll see a slightly bent elbow uh, when you're doing a posed character, <clears throat> a, a neutral character. You'll bend the elbow slightly and that's so that the rigger knows where the elbow is. Because riggers, a lot of the time, they're not like anatomy whizzes or whatever. They don't know where your intention, especially with stylized, maybe you have funky proportions. They don't know where your intended elbow is. So they're gonna place the joint where they just think the elbow is. It may not be where you want the elbow to be. So you, that's why you, you'll bend, you won't have a, a locked out arm, you'll bend it slightly. And that way they'll know where to put the elbow. It's the same, it could be the same thing with the fingers, the, the joints in the fingers. So if it's slightly bent, they'll know where to put the, <clears throat> the joints uh, based on what the modeler intended. So. That was another long-winded one, but that was a good question. I enjoyed that one. Like when I got into, uh, I got into doing this. Like I, I got into 3D because of ZBrush, uh, because like I was, a, I was all I was doing was drawing and painting for years and years. And eventually, um, I discovered ZBrush. I, I wasn't into 3D because I wasn't into it. I was like, oh, polygons and ugh, it's all technical and ew, I don't like it. And um, that was basically my thought on the whole, the whole thing. And then ZBrush came along and I was like, oh yeah, this is, because I love sculpting. I, I, I loved traditional sculpting. Um, I was like, oh, this is, this is great. I can do like traditional kind of sculpting and not worry about the polygons and the, the edge flow and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I just started playing with ZBrush and um, just sculpting and, you know, Dynamesh and all that kind of stuff. Um, didn't ever think anything about what the edge flow was like or, and eventually based on that, uh, I got a job. But then when I got a job, I got a job as a junior uh, character modeler and but i ha obviously at that point now i have to make production ready characters and they need to deform and therefore they need the correct topology and all that stuff um so i had to learn and i was not reluctant to learn i learned as quick as i could because i wanted to do good because you know i wanted to keep working in that studio and i wanted to be a good character modeler so i could you know, have a good career, blah, blah, blah. And um, so I learned it. And the more I learned about it, the more interested I became in it. And to the point, to got to the point that I was like, oh, this is really, I just, I find it really interesting. Like I love figuring out new ways to like, make like efficient yet really, like, uh, like really efficient topology that works really well for the animators and like trying to figure out like what's, what do we need the character to do and what do we not need the character to do? So, you know, it's not just like the more function, the better, because that's not the case, because the more function, the more, the more um, intricate your topology needs to become and the more intricate your topology needs to become, the more intricate the, the, the rigger's job is going to be, which isn't necessarily the correct answer because you could end up making it more intricate than ever needs to be used in, in terms of the functionality of the rig later in terms of like what's in the storyboards and what do the characters need to be able to do um like if you're making topology so that they can like flex their biceps and stuff but no character ever does that then what are you doing with your topology like you're, you're you just keep it simple straights ups and downs where possible because that's much easier to rig like you'll notice here sometimes depending on the rig or sorry depending on the the, the base mesh but oh, i see it often uh, you'll see loops that go up here up and around so you might say oh paul your loops are wrong there 
because they need to go up and around um, but they don't uh, it's just slightly more awkward to rig and if your character is in like skin tight clothing or whatever then fine because you want some like what you're saying here you want some way to define that uh, now depending you could use normal especially if you're using in, in games uh, but also you can use normals uh, to get some sort of information there um, but here you can see it's straight up and down now it's obviously kinked around because I've been sculpting onto this but this will be straight up and down and that's much easier a, a much quicker turnaround for rigging so they can get it out quicker they can rig it quicker they can, it's less complicated shorts or whatever are going to go on these trousers that aren't skin tight there's going to be no detail like that there it's not necessary so um, it depends on what you need yeah then again you might need that but you need to know the difference and why it's there if once you know why it's there you're not you're you're problem solving you're not just doing things for the sake of like oh this is the way i see in the topology on youtube or whatever you need to know or you know you know you're looking at another artist's topology and just using that instead and again like as a junior you're not expected to know that stuff but as a senior or a lead you are as a mid you'll be expected to know your topology and how to retopologize and usually you'll just follow what the studio's base topology is and then you'll get bespoke characters that you'll have to retopologize yourself and you know you'll get help from your lead and rigging and blah 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 but once you're senior you're expected to be able to pretty much figure it out like you might need some help on tricky parts and blah 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 but pretty much you know you can you you know what topology to put in maybe your lead has another idea maybe your rigger has but you're not you're not just completely wrong you just there's some ways maybe you could do better um because at that point you know you're, you should be on pretty much equal level in terms of the understanding there the difference between a senior and lead is not is not like sculpting skill or topology skill or blend shapes or anything like that it's just your lead has to actually look after the team has to do all the training has to do the documents has to do the that end of it um, and the senior doesn't have to do that stuff so you'll, you'll find some people who are more than capable like have the experience and more than capable to do a lead position but they stay senior which I can understand I, I, I personally enjoy being a lead but it's not for everybody I, I like I like being a lead for the same reason I like doing these. I like, you know, working with people and helping people and stuff. I, I think I'm a, um, I'm a social animal. Ba, 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 ba. Do I want to do something? Nah, not really. I'm enjoying this now. This is a particularly we're getting some good subjects in here, some great questions. I'm just tipping away at some some anatomy. This is I don't know about you. I am having a ball. <laughs> yeah, okay. So straight fingers, great question. The babu. Great question. Um Okay, uh Derek is asking Hey Paul, I agree with you. Oh, sorry about uh, I agree with you on how learning guitar and ZBrush are similar, starting simple three chords, brushes, and, and the truth. The truth. Are we just philosophical at the end of that, or miss, or a typo? I can't tell. But let's go philosophical. Uh, three chords, brushes, and the truth. Uh, let's go with that. Oh, I need to start some merch. I can start selling some t-shirts. I could put your name under. You know what I mean? Derek Davila. And just three cards, brushes, and the truth. Um, hola. Oh, Peter's, Peter's animation. Hola. 
Um, Yulia, you're saying me too. I can't. Re I God knows what I was talking about when you wrote that. Um, but glad you agree. Uh, Mercury. Okay, Mickey seven. Mer Mercury is in retrograde. Prepare for the call of the beast or something. Don't forget to charge your crystals. Cool. Thanks for the input. That's yeah. Don't forget to charge your crystals, folks. Uh, learning the pipeline where you want to work and being able to adjust to the flow and being all around creative and have a good understanding of the subject, the subject or designs uh, you're trying to model will get you far in the industry at Pixelogic. As in at Pixelogic. Um, from my experience uh absolutely well i mean that's just saying yeah i mean you essentially be good at all the things that are required of that job is so yeah of course yeah the better you are at that stuff the uh the the, the more successful you'll be um like all like, okay so all the responsibilities let's say okay so okay as a lead right so my job, day to day, essentially, is to, from an artist's point of view, is to do design sculpts and do them well. Obviously, make them appealing. Um, based on the two D, uh, in my particular job, I'm, I would consider myself very lucky because I, I love as you guys have seen before. Uh, anyone who's watched a bunch of these streams um, that I also like to design characters and I love that end, end of it and um, in where I work at the moment a, a studio called Giant um, I get to do that too which is which I, I love um, it's a great experience too because you know the art director there um, and directors that I've worked with uh, in there are all really talented so I get really good feedback too it's not you know it's like which kind of you're you're putting your design ideas forward and then you're getting feedback you're like oh maybe this could work better and this could be an angle and this you know whatever and that's really helpful Um, so I do that then I do the topology so I retopologize once I've done the technical model uh, the technical finish model um, I do the blend shapes and that's me finished in terms of the artist end of my job which is making the characters um, and then on top of that um, I have to if, you know if someone's stuck or whatever they can come to me if they're stuck with any aspect of any of those steps they can come to me to to get help um, and that's not to say being a lead means you have all the answers all the time. Uh, in fact, it's very important as a lead to know when to say, I don't know. Um, but you should be able to find the answer for them. You should at least know where to look. Um, so the other side of it is then, you know, with when it comes to say juniors, um, even some mids, you, you might have to actually teach them something that they don't know so you might have a junior who's a great sculptor but isn't very good on the technical end of it so you're going to have to teach them about topology and so on uh, you're going to have to teach them how to do blend shapes maybe you know I've worked with juniors uh, and even some mids um, that are good sculptors are okay with retopology but actually have never done blend shapes so I've, I, I have to teach them from scratch essentially how to do blend shapes because it can be hard to find people who are good at all three of course so sometimes the studio will end up hiring someone who's you know really good at one but you know needs help with one or two of the others or doesn't know how to do one of them or whatever um assuming that there's there's time there that you know the lead or myself can actually put into teaching them the entire step and working with them over time to get them better and better because it's going to require you know not going to get it right the first time it's going to require a lot of feedback and back and forth and so on 
um, and then making documentation for a pipeline and a workflow and um, how how things should be rendered how you know how how to get the you will have documentation on how to get the topology correct what it should look like generally speaking uh, little tips and so on might make documents on that um, all that kind of stuff and this isn't this all of what I'm describing now is not specific to my job it's this is any studio any lead modeler will have to to, to do all that stuff um, and we'll also head things like you know like usually it's the lead that would make say like a studio wide topology for human characters or something like that or yeah I mean, it could be a senior, but the lead will have to approve it and all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot and in any of those steps, you know, like there's a lot to blend shapes. Like that's an art, that's a job in itself in some studios, just a blend shape artist. Uh, so, hands up anyone who's a blend shape artist that's watching. I've actually never met a blend shape artist. Um, because uh, probably because I mostly work in animation, that's more of a, it's more of like a VFX and games thing. Um, but blend shapes are a lot of fun. Actually, the 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 tip I did for the last ZBrush summit was how to do blend shapes in ZBrush, how to make a blend shape in ZBrush. Um, you can find that on on Pixelogic's channel as well. So. If you're if you're interested to see what that looks like if you don't know what a blend shape is it's basically or a morph target is another word for it if you're like a max user it's basically where you have like a, well this is facial blend shapes a blend shape could be you could technically use a blend shape to bend an arm um and you could also use like ah anyway generally when we say blend shapes we mean facial expressions and making them appealing and there's a whole thing in that. So again, you need to know your anatomy because you need to know about your nasolabial fold, which is always a big one. You always hear that when you're talking about blend shapes because you get that big smile and how the cheeks scrunch up and what happens on either side of the nose and the nostrils and you know what happens. I, yeah, it's very complicated. There's a, there's a whole. I could I could do a whole. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I could do a whole tutorial on even just blend shapes that would probably take longer than just doing a sculpting one uh, and then obviously topology has its own it's very complicated as well so well depending but uh, you can kind of get away with topology a little bit more sometimes because you know if you're a junior say and you're working on a a film or a TV show or a game that's all human characters then topology would pretty much be the same across all of them so you just have to match it um, and when you can match the topology across all your characters you can also share blend shapes across characters which also helps all that good stuff of course if you've got a base mesh to start from then you've got some good shapes you know, at least your proportions and stuff are figured out for you already. So there is some, there is some kind of crutches there, but that's why it's also very important that you go home and you keep doing this stuff and get better and better. So you can see, so here we're doing some anatomy, but we're trying to be, this is a big chunky guy. What we don't want to do is do like super ripped Superman anatomy. I'm trying to just find, I'm just looking and I'm, I'm freestyling this, which is, I, I'm not, like I said, like the only reference I have is this. So I have no anatomy reference or anything. So I'm just freestyling it kind of, and then um, figuring out like what looks 
what might be interesting playing around with it as I go. Which, um, oh, didn't mean to do that. This. So I'm just, yeah, I'm just looking for like interesting little shapes to make that aren't, you know, I don't want anything too, like, I don't want anything super bold. So like the ribs come down, they stop here, and you've got your um, obliques on the sides. So that means, you know, maybe you can add a crease in here kind of defines where the end of the ribs go and where the obliques start. I could even, the obliques go up here and come down. You know that snake bite, you ever hear that? Like any of you guys that are into going to the gym or anything like that, or get that like snake bite thing. Which kind of comes from there. But we don't want a snake bite. Too much, this guy's got a bit of a go. Well, I'm thinking like strong man. I don't want I don't want him to be like I said, I don't want him to be some big muscular You know, think more like the mountain from Game of Thrones, like that kind of musculature. More of a strong man body type than like a than like a Or a, a, a bodybuilder. <clears throat> and you can see there, I'm just seeing, I don't know if it's going to work, just putting a little edge here with the Damien Standard, big Damien Standard, you can see there. Just across there, real light, just and then tapping it with the, the smear, just see, just to get that little subtle. And you might think, oh, sure, you'd never see that unless it's something from the side. I know, you, you won't see any of this because he's going to have a lot of clothes on. But, say, we're talking, like, imagine this guy in, like, a super suit-type situation. Like, the Incredibles, that kind of suit. Um, all these little marks and stuff, it's how the light reacts to them. It's not just about being able to directly see them. It's how the light reacts to the, to the shapes. down on the calf and like this is where that anatomy knowledge is coming in that like is purely just that's not like something again like I don't have a reference for it it's not off someone else's sculpt it's not from some other animated thing that I've seen or whatever it's just I know that I know that does that in in the body, and this is how I can walk that in and, and like make something kind of interesting there, you know. And then you can still have you can still have like a crease there. That makes sense. So. Um, That's uh, t that should help. That that's a good example of uh, what uh, you were asking earlier, Teeth. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, by the way. It's the downside from Ireland. We don't have as many um, exotic names, Peters and Pauls.
Not to say we've no, we do, but it's not as common. So sometimes I'm like, oh, I hope I'm pronouncing this name right. So, I'll often do this, <clears throat> at the moment I'm kind of taking advantage of doing the body here because, just so you guys, just because I'm here and you guys can kind of see how I'll go about that, just how I'll sculpt into the body, into a body like this, and the top process and so on. But uh, that said, um, going to hammer home the point I was making earlier um, I'll often just do this like if I was doing this sculpt on my own just personally um, just for funsies uh, I'd often do this anyway uh, just because I enjoy it it's a waste of time it, technically I guess because well, I'd say it's a waste of time in terms of it's a waste. It's a waste of time in terms of getting the sculpt done. Um, it's always good practice, so it's never a waste of time. But you know, in terms of getting the sculpt done, I don't need to do this. Um, but I would do it anyway because it's fun. I would just do it because I enjoy it and it's fun because of enjoying the process, like I was saying to you earlier. Try the same thing that we were doing earlier with the, the calf muscle. Do something like that up here with the, nothing too hectic, just something. Now see, I have this thing in the topology for the elbow. This is to help with keeping a crease in the elbow. Uh, sorry, I'll get back to the comments now. Um, this is to help with getting times of, yeah. Having a, a, an, el an actual elbow, because what will happen is you either have what will ha often happen is in that, in, in, when you're um, deforming the arm, you'll get like a, a, a rubber hose effect, they usually call it, where it just looks like a rubber hose that's bending. It doesn't look like there's a there's a, a bone there. Uh, so there's a certain way you do this and there's a certain way you skin it. And it's not, I didn't make this up or anything. Um, I think this originates from like, I wanna say Pixar. Um, I just found this from, you know, over the years, like checking out videos on to on topology or whatever, which they're not nearly enough. But anyway, yeah. Um, but you can see there, cause of the nature of how that works when I'm subdividing it, it's giving me all this stretchy stuff. But that's okay. We don't have to worry about it too much. I'll just leave the, I'll just leave the elbow, rather than trying to get, because I'll have to fight all that. Not sure how we feel about that edge on there. Oh, it's got that's kind of I like that shape. That's kind of nice. Sometimes to have like an edge. See there, like that. Or even on like a kind of squared off bicep, like that. Can be nice. I know 
I say a squared off bicep, I wouldn't leave it like that. That looks honky from the front. So again, going back in with my Uh, alt smooth so like using shift and then let going or letting go shift But I like the I kinda like the relationship between like the the, the stump the, the torso and the legs now he's got like a very top heavy kind of feel. Which is what I was looking for, so that's good. I'll tell you what, what am I here? So you can see now So yeah, this is where I brought in the mesh and just kind of inflate and move. And it was about here-ish when you guys, when I started the stream. So it was like here when I started the stream. So we've gone from this to this so not bad the biceps are bothering me now I think I this is too much there Looks like a bunch of stuff now in the comments to get through. Um, uh, yeah, I do. Okay. I hope that's how we've covered a, a, a fair chunk of stuff there. I hope that's I hope that's being useful to you guys. Um. Two hours took me to open a high res file when I first started learning. Yeah, that can be a big problem when you start learning as well. Again, your technical stuff comes in and helps there of knowing how to avoid those kind of situations. Uh, that's often the thing with juniors, like everything breaks on them constantly and you always have to go, they're like, oh, I did this how you showed me, but it's not working. You're like, yeah, it's just the, all these little things that you don't know, you're not aware of. Uh, it's just part of the beast, you, you, you get used to them. Um, question if you were limited to sculpting with only two or three brushes in ZBrush for an entire project what would they be? about move absolutely uh, Damien Standard and move are definitely the two like I could not I, they're my they're my go to's they're I'm using move 90% of the time Damien's Damien standard I'm using like 15% of the time sorry I realise what I just said uh, let me I'd say actually 70% of the time I'm using move 20% of the time I'm using Damien standard and then the last 10% is divvied out between like pinch inflate and the odd like specific brush for like maybe if I'm doing, you know, I don't know, skin pores or something, I don't know. Um, just something really specific. Although, actually, um, no. Okay, three top brushes. 
Move Brush, Damien Standard, and Z Modeler. Here are my three top brushes. Um, Julia, now I have to ask when is your birthday because my sign is also Taurus. Uh, the, a part of my brain just went, do I say my birthday online? But I guess, I mean, you're not Brad Pitt, Paul. No one's going to be stalking you in a bush. Uh, yeah, so my birthday is the 20th of May. Uh, the Babu... And he means a knot. What did I say that might mean that? A knot. I'm not sure. Um, hey, X Diggy. Um, Gats 3D, how's it going? Uh, glad to see you, Sculpting Tay. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, eyelid is hard for me. Okay, let's do an eyelid real quick. We already did a bottom eyelid. We'll do a top eyelid, even though this guy will hardly need one. But I've done this a bunch of times. A bunch of you will have seen this. I'm going to make an eyelid. In 10 seconds. Back down. Dink. Chunk. It's made. You just can't see it. There it is. There's your eyelid. Just add thickness. This is why the Damien standard. Or, sorry, the the uh, Z modeler that was actually the, the so that was the the topology brush that made it but from here I can use a Z modeler to like see the way when I smooth this let me take the creases off on crease so it just squashes it to bits so again I'll just add in my edge loops skadoosh And I can even then go extrude all polygons. Oh, sorry, there we go. I'll flip that. I need to add a support loop in there. Oops. All right, in fairness, the whole thing was 10 seconds. But drawing the initial shape out it took like 10 seconds. Um, so you can start with that and now when you say you struggle with it this is obviously when we were talking about anatomy right so this was I just took that as a, a time to shut off that little quick quick tip but I know what you mean you're talking about like a fully a fully because you've got like the, the the tear duct and all that but if you can start with something like this right and you know even then you can kind of Couldn't be more of an awkward eye to show this, but you know what I mean. If you can get something like that in place first, that's kind of your base shape. That might help. It's worth a try. Because it's not really with this weird character. It's kind of tear duct goes right up into. It's got that deadpan expression. Uh, 
Um, so I hope that helps. Um, parts of the eye is how I shared. Yeah, like the eyes are really important. They're really, you know, windows to the soul, all that stuff. So it's really important um, to try get the eyes right. So in the face in general, uh, the eye sockets. It's one of those things I've said it a bunch of times. You probably blew in the face, blew in the face, and you guys that have been here a bunch of times, um, watching these streams with me. Um, everything is relative. Every shape is relative to the shape around it. It's impossible to get the eye right if the eye socket's not there. If the nose isn't there, it's very hard to get the eye sockets there. It's very hard to get the eyes there. It's very hard to know where the nose should be without the ears, and also the ears without the neck if you're if you know you've just made the head all that type of stuff uh, so you really that's why i always emphasize that you should make sure to get those get those initial shapes in broadly uh all in first before you start sculpting into stuff because uh otherwise it's very difficult to get something like the eyes right because you don't have everything else that's relative to it um Hey Sarah, nice to see you back. Um, it's always great to see you guys coming back for more. Um, I have copied you, Paul. Sorry, I used one of your images as a reference taken from Pinterest. Oh yeah, no, that's perfectly fine. Uh, don't you know? There's no absolutely no need to apologize for because you're referencing what I'm doing. At the, especially like I know there's some of you guys. Um, have you know followed along watched what i've been doing in the stream and actually followed along and and directly did what i did in in zbrush like i know a bunch of people did like was the last one i think i seen on the way well everything from the zbrush masters one that i did of the um the kind of demon head to like the last one i think was like the turkey that i did like a thanksgiving a good while back um and will tag me on it and which is great and i encourage you to do that if you do you know follow along my stream to make something yourself uh do tag me in it when you're posting it on instagram or whatever it's always great to see um and that's fine it, it'd be it'd be different if you went into my art station and to be honest if you do it and you got a job if you went into my art station copied all my images put them in your own art station and then got a job you're not going to be able to reproduce them in that studio anyway and you're going to lose that job pretty quickly and tarnish your name so really anyone who's going to do that leave them at it they're not going to get very far um at the end of the day what is the point um if they want some followers good luck to them doing that too whatever um so doing but anything outside of that where you're like using other artists work for reference um even just copying what someone's doing like myself or any of the other guys on 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 pixlogic or any anyone else uh there's absolutely nothing wrong with that absolutely nothing wrong with that it's all it's all in the name of practice and getting better um uh hey jeffrey Again, another one. Always back. Great to see you, Jeffrey. Um, Kamal, the model looked like a character from a gorilla music video. Nice style. This model does. That I can't tell you how many times I've been told that about different models I've done. Um, I, I love that. That is really cool. They, that I love those characters. So I don't take it. it it's just mad to me because it's never. I don't ever use those characters as reference. I'm not like a really big Gorillaz fan or anything. I don't know why. I guess it's just, I don't know. Something about my approach makes it so, I don't know. Um, have you experienced that feeling when you're happy with your sculpt and then you export to Maya and suddenly everything looks weird? Um, no, not necessarily. I, I Maybe look at what um, you when you're sculpting something I always do I always turn the camera the see the focal here you have the focal distance right 
and you can set that to 85. I think by default it's at 50. So you can see the difference there when I do that. Or if I go down to 18, you can see, like this is how, this is like a fisheye lens type thing. It's the perspective of your, um, so I always sculpt in 85. Uh, generally characters, people in photography even, are shot with a higher millimeter lens. Because uh, you're, you're not, like if you shoot with a really low millimeter lens and you take a picture of someone's face, their face is going to be all fisheye. You're not going to be able to see their ears past the side of their face. It's going to be like almost behind them, if you know what I mean. So, uh, and generally when I do renders, I'll always do them in, generally speaking, a fairly high, not, well, yeah, fairly high, like at least 65 millimeter um, up to like, 85-ish. I, I generally won't go much higher than that though. Um, but yeah. So I'll generally sculpt in this um, millimeter. Um, and then in that way in uh, Maya, I'll match the millimeter. Now it won't be exact. It doesn't mean that's because there's different things that come into it like distance from the, the characters, distance from the camera and all that type of stuff. But anyway, yeah. Uh, you'll, you'll see it sometimes if you're like, uh, if I go down to 50 so perspective is off sorry so this is with perspective and then orthographic I turn it off and you can see more of the side of the head and stuff you can see like it's a very very obvious like you'd, you'd never be able to mistake the two like the, it's a very obvious difference um, and depends some characters and the shape you'll see it more especially like if I go down now to like 24 Is that down right there? anyway you get the point um, yeah. so maybe look at that I'm not too sure um, I generally don't necessarily um, but maybe there's something else there that I'm not aware of um, Ah, uh, A cubed is there. Ash, Ash is another. Ashley Adams is A cubed. She's another one of the uh, Pixelogic streamers. For for those who don't know, um, I wonder is she on after me today. Um, I can't think because the schedules shift sometimes. Um, you can check it anyway on the Pixelogic um, calendar, Pixelogic live calendar, uh, or schedule. Yeah, uh, you can find out who's on at what date and all that stuff um what are you saying ash give it to the rigger and then ask for a load of correctives at the down position <laughs> uh, and have been posture i'll starve to death the rigger as well sure it yeah well yeah <laughs> the We all often like you'll kind of you know like it's a common thing you'll hear people say in like animation and stuff of like oh yeah we'll look after it and post as in just shove the problem down the line <laughs> which yeah that happens sometimes you'll see that happening sometimes it's like ah, we'll worry about let the riggers worry about it or they'll they'll sort it out with but like in my studio even like I'll I'll often well me and the rigger will often like share out what correctives make the most like we'll have a back and forth and figure out the correctives together and that's a whole thing so i don't really have the i can't just go nah, I can't. He'll do that. um yeah <laughs> uh okay well uh karanis so you could wait so you could a lead is more of a teacher then um one of the things a lead does is teach but it's not i'm not i wouldn't say it's a more of a teacher necessarily it's just one of the things that you have to be because you kind of have to be a bit of a manager um a bit of a teacher and also a, an artist as well like being able to do all the those parts too um so because you're also kind of i forgot to mention actually you'll also often kind of depending you'll often like have to manage your team's tasks and stuff um and keep track of like 
you'll have to you'll also have to give like time bids um maybe not for every artist but you know you'll often be asked to give like time bids for other artists work and stuff so how long will so and so take to do this character or something i you know i'll always be generous with them i'll give them time i won't um a very advanced teacher maps well yeah again yeah so yeah in 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 yeah that's one of the kind of hats let's say um oh mick is saying because because of the someone was talking about the star signs earlier yeah <laughs> oh good man mick where are you from mick i wonder are you irish or something like it scottish or something because only on i feel like it takes that kind of uh cynical cynic cynicism to uh because it's funny you know like i always hear in like american tv shows or even like people who come over here from well multiple countries but america seems to be one that you you, you guys seem to talk about zodiac signs fairly regularly uh, which is fine but uh it's like a trope it's like a you know what i mean because like nobody I mean, maybe nowadays, young the the younger you are, the more likely people, and even in Ireland, will. But generally, it's not something that would often come up in conversation here. I like if I was in in a pub with my friends, and one of my mates turned around and went, "What's all the exciting to you?" I'd be shocked. I'd be like, "What did you just ask me?" <laughs> it would be. It would take me aback. Let's say. Um. <laughs> yeah uh sergio paul it is difficult to make stylized characters and some advice for someone starting out in stylized characters uh yeah well i i mentioned a bunch of stuff earlier i i'd, I'd actually recommend probably going back because i can't recover all that stuff again because i don't have time and i don't want to waste everyone else uh, and it's after 10 now uh, but um start simple is is the basis of it start simple get some just YouTube tutorials to get you moving, get get your feet off the ground. Um, you know, a nice simple bust, maybe something with very simple hair, no hair, whatever. Just so, and something you'll enjoy. Um, don't bite off more than you can chew, and that way you'll learn a little bit, and you'll have something to show for it, and then you can keep going from there. So that's what I would recommend. Um, but I I went a little bit more into that earlier in the stream, so by all means uh if if you want to go back and search that out um ash is saying yeah i learned all i know about topo from my first job as a junior uh from my lead at the time yeah i i learned well i learned actually from a bunch of people um i had my supervisor uh he was great uh he taught me a bunch uh he was after coming from disney uh working on like i think the last thing he worked on was frozen maybe and then he came over to ireland to work in uh brown bag where i was working and i just happened to be sitting next to him so i got to like you know just suck all the knowledge off him as much as i could and uh, i had but I, I have to say i was so lucky when i started in the industry uh with the artists that i had around me well i mean i call it lucky i don't know I, I i would definitely say lucky in ireland because obviously we don't have like the industry that you know if you're starting in la or something obviously there's a much bigger pool of artists there than many other countries but i i was very 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 lucky uh i had i had a multitude i had of artists around me that were just outstanding and not only character artists so a good friend of mine um Giacomo who came over from Italy to work in brown bag uh was just in terms of like teaching me the technical stuff and yeah he taught me not so 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 much uh so like the first six months of working in the industry I grew more as an artist than I did in ever well I did ever uh you know and obviously then you, you learn enough that it starts to taper off. If, if you excelled at that pace, if I excelled at that pace ever since, I'd be good. Uh, but yeah, 
that's my supervisor used to call it the incubation period. That's what he called it. Um, which is basically just, you know, for anyone starting out in the industry or anyone who's going to start in the industry, um, people won't, and if they do, they shouldn't expect you to know everything or anything even close to everything. Uh, they will expect to have to help you and that's perfectly fine and it's totally acceptable so don't try you know i know sometimes people can be hard to approach um and some people more than others but you know try to break that wall and and get get as suck as much information out of them as you possibly can especially when you start because you won't be able to do that when you're a senior you know you can totally talk and back and forth ideas and blah 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 but you know as a junior you're allowed to just go help and they have and they'll help you know and they'll show you everything and keep going back and take notes write things down don't go back with the same question eight times in a week it doesn't mean that but do go back and ask them new questions and you know sometimes they'll show you how to do something and they'll underestimate how little you know because you're still only new and they'll assume that you know three things they'll fix it for you walk away and then it happens to you the next day and you still don't know how to fix it so try to get them how did you fix that i don't understand how you did this bit because that is a lot less annoying than coming back and asking them to fix it the following day so you know just kind of common sense uh, essentially um Sarah's saying, I love doing blend shapes and getting the right expression with the little details. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love doing blend shapes. I hated blend shapes when I started because they're so complicated. And there's so many things that you have to take into consideration and how they blend together. And oh, it was so hard to get my head around. That was really so stressful uh, when I started doing blend shapes. But that said, like I barely, we were doing blend shapes in Maya and I barely knew how to use Maya when I started doing blend shapes. So it was a real struggle and I was afraid for my job, but I pulled it off in the end by just pure terror. And uh, kept me at the table, at the desk, just trying to get, trying to make sense of it. But uh, uh, yeah, now I, now I really enjoy blend shapes. I like the, the problem, again, the problem solving element of blend shapes and all that good stuff trying to find those little details like a little little i love the something i started doing recently was just adding a little crease i have topology there that i can add a little when i smile i can add a little dimple um which was actually from a, a rig that an animator had used and had that in it and i was like oh i really love that i'm gonna make sure now to implement that going forward in my own stuff and i did not exactly how they did it though. Um, I simplified it. You should look at Tom Stoltman for a ref of Strongman. Oh, nice one. Thank you. Fair play to you, Mick. I'll write that name down here. Uh, we have to wrap this up soon. Um, where was I? Where was I? Um, Brandon Marshall says, and I've read ahead this, so I know what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, Brandon. Uh, or am I? I'm going to let everyone else read it. Should I? I feel like he wins if I don't read it. Brandon's looking for attention essentially that's that's what's happening um nah maybe maybe he wins if i do read it actually okay i probably said i should have just left it anyway well now i've called him out on it so there's that um anastasia why are there no subtitles because uh is there ever subtitles on a stream i don't know maybe there is on a stream i don't know Anyway, that will be way too complicated. Uh, sure, sure. Well, okay. Maybe maybe you can't understand me. But I, I'd like to know if anyone has that problem. Does anyone struggle understanding me? 
I know some words might be difficult uh, if you're not used to like how Irish people pronounce things, but I didn't think I had like a huge, like such a, there's definitely much thicker Irish accents than mine. Um, but if it's a problem, I can try to tone it back. But that, I, I find it that, not that it's difficult, it's not just, but can be kind of exhausting if you have to do it too much um, and I do already a little bit anyway um, let me know give him long johns yeah um, the character Harry Mandibles another 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 regular um, this is the character here from Corey Smith art you can find him on um insta and he does uh, amazing characters so this is the con i decided to do this concept because i just thought it was epic and i like the balance of shapes and i thought it'd be actually good practice to to knock this guy out so there you go although today we basically just walked into anatomy uh, you know what that arm could do nah, we can't go back um only snake hook him oh wait yeah um yeah, Ash is saying only snake hook and masking. Yeah, that's basically if you, if you haven't ever watched any of A Cubed's uh, streams, go watch them because I think if you watch and it's interesting because I often my stream will follow or sorry Ash's stream will follow mine and like we could not be like in terms of you know. You could never say ZBrush is only used for one thing. Like, the, what I do is not just like, oh, this is how you use ZBrush. Because then you go over to Ashes and she is doing something completely different. Like her workflow, uh, the, her the way, the kind of uh, uh, shapes that she's getting out of it and stuff. Because of her workflow, all that stuff is so different. And she's incredible. So, uh and she will basically just snake hook her way to this unreal creature or whatever on the fly and that's what she does in the stream she does all sorts of other things she does stylized she has some stylized characters as well there i've seen that are really that are great and uh but like on her streams she just like concepts on the fly with a snake hook brush and um embraces this grunchies the crunchies the crunchies i think you call it ash right not even sure if you're there still but anyway uh yeah so it's a good example of like oh you can see some like it's a really a very different like if you watch say shane olsen is another um streamer and like the style our style and stuff is kind of different but like our approach is more or less the same he his workflow is different but you know you if you watched if you watched me and then you watch shane you're not like what it's not gonna you know what i mean where ash is then a very different type and then i mean yeah there's there's a lot of different kind of sculptors in zebrush so it's um yeah so I, i'm like move brush and like move damien standard and uh z modeler I don't think I've ever seen Ash use the Z modeler. I'm sure you probably have, but I, I never see you use the Z modeler. But like you can tell, I'm all like, I want control and I want creases and I want blah, blah, blah. Where Ash is like way more loose and sketchy um, in her work. Uh, I do use Z modeler a lot, just bought that at the end there. Um, oh, Ash is on today, cool. I say kill. Cool. It's disappointing for everybody else, but it means, well, that or I'm either just inter or interrupting somebody else. Um, Yulia is saying, sorry if it's an inappropriate question. Ah, Yulia, no, not at all. Sorry, I shouldn't have. I, <laughs> I just had that thought and I caught, again, I just saw, I called myself out on it because of how silly that thought was. But of course, no, it wasn't at all an uh, inappropriate question, not at all. Um, <laughs> I feel like this is like a weekly or a bi-weekly 
thing now. Someone has to ask, am I doing in mentorships yet? And Harry Mandibles, you're probably someone who's asked them before, but not yet. I won't, I won't be doing them for a while because I have a lot of other stuff to kind of get out of the way first. Um, before Because mentorships, I have to be like nothing else on because I need all my attention should be on because that's like focused on the person, on calls and all that kind of stuff. So um, I can't have other things on. So you really have to have like a free schedule or, you know, a free enough schedule to not just be there for the person and on the calls but also prep and also you know all that all that stuff so um nightbot 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 um yeah mix from belfast i knew it not yeah i'm sure he's only up the road um only the Wait, Harry Mandel's only the chicks you pick at the music festivals talk about Zodiac Science. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Gary? What's his name? Gary? Is that an answer to somebody else's question? I don't get that. Um, anyway. Uh, that slows my process, but I get it eventually. If you uh, Carol easy, no, it slows my process, but I get it eventually. Sorry, man. It's of I'm trying to catch up here, and I can't. Like I, the context is gone. Uh, if you can understand a native English speaker, you should be able to understand you as well. Yeah, hopefully. Um, tone it down, tone it up. Um, yeah, like get my accent can get a lot. A lot worse can get really like like i can't it's actually when i go to do a deeper version of my accent my initial instinct is is to course because irish people course a lot not not all irish people but like people with a thicker accent tend to um but it gets like people will get me to say things like diamond as in a diamond earring, say diamond, or what else? Purple, purple, is a is a common one. Or third, the fourth, the second, and the third. Um. Yeah, so, yeah, so it depends. But I try to I pull it back a little bit. I even don't use all this usual Irish sayings and all that stuff, like because I sort of always just wouldn't understand half the stuff I'm saying. Just. Um, where's most of these comments coming from? Couldn't tell you, haven't a clue. Um, well, they're coming from, well, I don't know where the most is, but there's uh, YouTube. Actually, I just noticed. Oh, there is Facebook, yeah, there's Facebook. Uh, so, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Most, I think. I think it seems is coming from Twitch, well Twitch and YouTube, and um, so yeah. So I can tell you apparently, um, and hola, limonese sortiva. I think, and I can't speak Spanish, so or oh, that could be Portuguese. I don't even know. Um, Moving on, <laughs> Mick, I used to get the London one asking me to say, oh, whore hair, whore hair. Oh, I, that's weird even in whore hair in my accent. Whore, whore, her, 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 I had to think. Yeah, her, 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 is, so in a Belfast it'd be like her, her. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, I gotta, I'm gonna wreck every every northern person that I meet from here on out. I'm gonna be asking them to do that. Anyone I meet from Belfast, I'm gonna be like straight away. Um. Yeah, love it, love it, love it. Well, I hope for the most part he's understood me. I tell you, lads, something for nothing. It's roasting. Uh, right, twenty-two minutes past. Now we are pushing it. 
potion our luck. All right, guys. So um, I think we spent the last twenty minutes just chatting, but uh, this is where we're at. I still have to work on the face. I still have to finish the ears. I still have to obviously start the clothing. But now we've got a cool, cool mesh. I still have to do the hands because I'm going to do the hands separately. I'm not going to use these. I kind of butchered them anyway when I was. That's a bit funky looking. Anyway. Uh, well, maybe I could use them as a bit. I don't know. We'll see. Um, this is what we're looking for. So, I hope you enjoyed this stream. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. See myself again in two weeks. Um, and also all the, other, all the other streamers like Ash that popped in for a bit. Um, they do incredible work and uh, I hope to see you all next time so until then guys all the best